We're gonna be doing something for March Madness today. I still, in the future, when I have more free time, I really wanna watch all of the Medea movies with Mouth and do a March Medeaness, and then rank, you know, what's better uh, in in the Medea verse. But we don't have time for that right now. Instead, I'm gonna stick to a subject that I know, which is sandwiches. And these are sandwiches from the Encyclopedia of Sandwiches. Um, so there are some classics in here, don't get me wrong. Um, and there's some messed up stuff as well, because I'm pretty sure this was made in like the 1960s, uh, which is when people were eating like bananas hollandaise and like jellied ham and stuff like that. I had a question as well, for the record. Um, I thought about this in the shower the other day. I apologize to YouTube because we're losing some momentum here. Do Gen Z people eat ham for dinner? Is that a thing that people under the age of, like, 26 do? No! Really? Do millennials eat, eat ham for dinner? Yeah, like, you get, like, you get a spiral ham at Costco or something like that, warm it up. Maybe have some mashed potatoes on the side, a little baby corn or something like that. Only on holidays. Dude, this is, I, I've never seen chat activity like this. Uh, growing up, I ate ham once a week for dinner, without a doubt. And it was one of the best meals we, we ate because my grandma didn't really know how to cook very well. So the ham, all you do is warm it up. And then you slice it. And not, not like lunch meat ham. It's a slightly better quality of ham than like, you know, the one nanometer thickness. And now I find myself kind of, like, I miss ham. Like, I haven't had ham for dinner in forever. Like, if I went to a buffet or something, like a Christmas buffet, and they had prime rib and ham, let's be honest, I'd probably get a little bit of both. But I would definitely not turn up my nose at the ham. I would be interested in getting a, a little mustard or HP sauce on top of it as well. I gotta get some ham, man. Anyway, okay. So we're ranking the sandwiches. I, I just, I wondered, I wondered if maybe the Hormel Corporation's in trouble. Because I might be the only person, you know, under the age of 50 that eats ham. But anyway, um, we're, we're gonna go through these rankings. I don't know if there's 64, um, but we'll just, we'll, we'll do it at runtime, okay? I hate to do this, because like, they really stacked the, the bracket right at, right at the top here. Um, Italian sub versus pulled pork, both... Top tier sandwiches, minimum A tier, possible S tier, Italian sub, cured meats, oil, vinegar, onion, lettuce. I mean, you get some gabagool on there, you get some pepperoni, you get some bologna, you get some salami, so many different options. Um, pulled pork, of course, very classic. I don't know why they have it looking like it's a bunch of O's in there. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to make some enemies right off the bat. For me, as close as this is, it's not close, because an Italian sub is my go-to. If I'm at a, a deli or a cafe or something, if an Italian sub is on the menu, there is a very high chance I will be considering that Italian sub versus anything else, especially if they have a spicy Italian sub option. But I must admit, the pulled pork, this is not like a jellied eels sandwich. This is a top-tier sandwich. To get knocked out in the first round is... is very disappointing for a sandwich with the pedigree of pulled pork, but only one thing can move on. Round two. The Caprice sandwich versus a bagel with lox. Caprice, mozzarella, tomato, basil, olive, ketchup, mayo, salt and pepper on a roll. Yes, sir. Bagel with lox. Of course, you got, uh, you know, a bagel. Cream cheese, smoked salmon, onion. Here's what I would say. Tomato. Not not what I would consider necessary on a on a bagel with lox, but maybe some capers or something like that, which is crazy because if you re uh, rearrange the letters in caprice, you get e capers. <laughs> um, this one is not that close. I like um, a caprice. I've, I've never had a caprice sandwich, but I like a caprice sun, and I like a, ca a caprice uh, salad for sure. Um, but. A bagel with lox, that's like a classic. That's like another, that's another go-to for me. Okay. Italian beef ver versus a French dip. I apologize for the low-res uh, photo here. This is um, roast beef, green peppers, and giardineria. 
which I thought was a gastrointestinal parasite. And uh, a French dip, a roast beef sandwich dipped in beef juice. This is uh, two sand sandwiches that look very similar. They both have roast beef as a primary ingredient. Um, but again, this is one that's not that close for me. The French dip, by virtue of it having the sauce, is an elevated sandwich. You don't dip too many sandwiches. And I very much like the fact that, like, if I'm buying a French dip, I'm buying it partly to dip because it's cool, you know? There's not the, you don't do that with many other... Uh, with many other handheld sandwich devices. I will say, and I have had this happen many times before, the cup that they give you for the French dip, look at the size of this thing as compared to the, the height of the sandwich. It's very difficult. You have to maybe just get like a, a, a corner or something like that in there. You need, you need a, a, a much wider and longer uh, cup. Maybe it's less deep, but still. But a, a, a French dip, I, I, I support it. Turkey club versus bologna sandwich. This, this is the easiest. This is, I mean, we're going to get into some, I'm sure there's going to be some gross stuff in the future as well. Um, look at this, okay? Three pieces of bread. Some care was included in creating this. It has bacon. This is the sandwich you make for yourself when, you know, you don't want anybody to know that you exist. This is a depression sandwich. I'm not saying I've never eaten them, but look at this thing. Whole, sad whole wheat bread. It's a little slice. I don't even know. That could be paper for all I know. It wouldn't change the quality. Bologna and mustard. I've made sandwiches like this, and I, you know, I could get down with it. I don't mind bologna as, like, uh, as an addendum meat. For example, if, if, if it's included in addition to another meat such as a salami, I'm okay with it. But it's a, yeah, you're not wrong. It's a bit of a struggle meal right here. Like this, this is what they used to eat when they were like sitting 40 stories up on a girder uh, building the Empire State Building in the 1910s. The, the turkey club, I don't love a, a turkey club sandwich to be honest with you, but um, it's, it's certainly not even close here. And that's the beauty of the bracket. Can't help but feel we're missing, we're missing out on. Is this like a maybe this is the play-in round? I'm not sure. Oh, we maybe we just go through one conference first. That's fine. An Italian sub versus a bagel with locks. It's about the same as the the pulled pork sandwich. You know, I, I love a bagel with locks. And for breakfast, I mean, I would be more inclined to take the bagel um, with locks. But long term, you know. Given the choice, we're going sub for sure. French dip versus a turkey club, easy money. We go French dip. Okay, moving on. A po' boy sandwich versus a Cubano. I must plead ignorance uh, to, to some extent here. I've never had a po' boy sandwich, but I have looked up the Wikipedia article on it many times because it looks delicious. A hollowed out baguette with some crunchy popcorn shrimp inside of it. I've never had it. I would, I would love it, but I've never had it. But I have had many a Cuban sandwich, and I, I continue to. I love a pressed sandwich. I love, I love a sandwich where pickles are a dominant element. I love when you, when you bite into the, the pressed Cuban sandwich and a little mustard gets on the corners of your mouth, and then you go... And you, you, you eat it, and you go, oh, that's like that's a hot mustard. It's got a little brine from the pickle on it as well. It's great stuff. The Cubano wins for me. Insulting to the po' boy, but it, again, I've never had one, so I apologize. I'm, I'm merely one man. Tonkatsu sandwich versus a torta. I am here to tell you I love tonkatsu. It's one of my favorite Japanese meals. I have never really had a, a Japanese sandwich that, that rung my bell if you know what I mean. It's, it's something about the, to, for my personal opinion, the disrespect to the bread. Always kind of like, you know, sugary white bread with the crust cut off. I, I love the tonkatsu, but I'm, I'm a torta man here. Like, I, I, I've only had a few tortas in my life, but I've always been very impressed. Maybe not a, an S-tier sandwich, but, but certainly ahead of the tonkatsu sandwich for me. Roast beef versus lobster roll. 
So it, the roast beef sandwich suffers greatly because of the fact that both the Italian beef and the French dip are strictly better versions of this, in my personal opinion. Plus, this just kind of looks disgusting. And it's partly because of the drawing. <laughs> but it's, it's just a very... I mean, this almost took it down a little bit in my power rankings just due to how unappetizing this is. Now, I like a lobster roll, but I have, I have some problems with it, I must add. Because of the fact that the lobster roll is like a glorified hot dog bun, it's weird to eat. You know, I like it, and I, 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 who doesn't, right? But I, I like lobster, um, and it's expensive, that's true. But, like, it's, it's weird to eat, because if you bite through the bottom... It's almost like a hard shell taco in the sense that it loses some structural integrity and then you end up eating, um, you know, the rest of it. It's, it's messy. You're using a fork and a knife, but um, it, I would definitely prefer, I mean, given the choice between these two, I, I would take it nonetheless. Yeah, and you're right, the lobster roll, it's always overstuffed, so sometimes you end up holding it like this and just biting a little lobster like off the top, but it, I, I do like it. I can't deny that. Fried chicken sandwich versus a BLT. Um, this one is going to annoy some people. I know BLT is probably one of the heavy hitters in this round. There's something to be said about... Uh, square bread toasted plus crispy bacon is one of nature's greatest combinations. There's no doubt about it. But, I mean, just by virtue of... You know, when I think of myself looking at it on a menu... There's no question I'm getting the fried chicken sandwich eight times out of ten. Probably eight times out of ten. So I, I got to go fried chicken on this one. A croque monsieur versus a tuna melt. Uh, I, I am, again, I'm going to cause some problems here. This is a very tough one for me. A croque monsieur... I'm okay with it. I like it. It's a, it's a, you know, glorified, you know, gussied up ham sandwich. By the way, what the heck is that? I'm scared about what's coming our way. A tuna melt, maybe the sandwich with the highest variance. Oh, that's just a Reuben. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a strawberry cake or something like that. I have eaten many a great tuna melt in my life. If they use decent tuna... And the tuna salad is not, like, inundated with way too much mayonnaise. And, you know, I've had some tuna melts that have, like, you know, boiled red potatoes in the tuna salad, and it's fantastic. But you can also get some tuna salads that, like, let me put it this way. If you opened it up uh, on a bus, people would know what you were eating. So, personally, I, given the choice between the two, I would still take the tuna melt every time. But it definitely, it, it, you know, these are sandwiches that it can go both ways. Let's put it that way. We'll go with the tuna melt on this one. A Reuben sandwich uh, versus a Monte Cristo. This is extremely tough for me as well. This is not what a Reuben sandwich looks like in my head, uh, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Definitely corned beef, Russian dressing, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese. I've never seen it served on uh, a monochrome rainbow like that, but... I do like rye bread. Okay, that's what that is. Um, the Monte Cristo is, is very good as well. I've never seen it served with jam. It's kind of interesting, but I got to tell you, it's very difficult for me to not choose something that is basically just, you know, salted meat. And I love sauerkraut. I love cabbage. I love fermented foods. Like the Reuben is a great sandwich for that. Okay, now, now we're going back... Italian sub versus French dip. <laughs> I hate to say it. Italian sub is a number one seat. I love the, you know, there's a couple of things you could say here, right? If you're sitting down, you could go either way, but I'd still probably take the Italian sub. But, I mean, portability. You're not taking a French dip, you know, on the, on the Sky Train with you. I'm an Italian sub guy. What can I say? Cubano sandwich versus the torta. Actually, a much easier question than the first time uh, we were going around here. You take the Cubano. Lobster roll versus fried chicken sandwich. For reasons previously mentioned, um, we will be going with the fried chicken sandwich on this one. Tuna melt versus Reuben. I would be taking the Reuben sandwich. Now we're getting tough. Okay, now we got to think. <laughs> oh. 
the Italian sub versus the Cubano. I have to imagine something here because these are these are two very top tick, uh, top ticketed. What am I talking about? Top tier sandwiches for me. The Italian sub or the Cubano. They both have a little sourness to them. The pickles versus the the vinegar. They both got cured pork products on them. If push came to shove, and I uh, that's what this is all about. I prefer the Cubano sandwich. It's the pickles, it's it's the the tartness of the mustard. I got to go Cubano on this one, but it's tough. This one is tough as well. Can I tell you? In general, structural integrity means something to me on a sandwich. And fried chicken sandwiches can go different ways depending on the way that they're constructed. Like if, you, if it's constructed of like a, a, a filleted thigh or something like that, you can actually like bite to the extent that you've taken out like 60% of the chicken but only 20% of the bun sometimes. The Reuben, on the other hand, it's, it's as if made by God, you know? It's elegant, circular. It, it has a uniform shape to it. This is a very tough one for me. I do like a fried chicken sandwich. I, it, it, it would be one of my top tier sandwich orders without a doubt. In fact, I like it so much, despite what I said, I think I've got to go with it. And then if we're doing Cubano versus fried chicken, I got to be honest, like it's, it's the Cubano. Okay. Now, the other side of the bracket. One side of the bracket has been completed, and the Cuban sandwich has won in the Western Conference. Time to make some enemies. A banh mi, also known as a, a Vietnamese submarine sandwich, versus a meatball sub. Um, I do not like a meatball sub. I'm sorry, Malf. I am. I, I, I think I would love a meatloaf sub. But it's, it's the meatballs that I can't get down with. A, a big sphere in between two flat planes, it doesn't work, man. Yeah, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. You got you to gotta slice the ball and then put like the flat side of the ball down on the bottom, and then you can kind of close it. Uh, the, the banh mi, on the other hand, I, I've had some banh mi's that didn't really tickle my fancy. Sometimes there, there's like a little pate element I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but in general, I, I love the banh mi. And I, the, the mixture of the, the Vietnamese flavors, the julienne carrots and stuff like that, the cilantro with the crispy French baguette, it's a match made in heaven. We're going banh mi on this one, no doubt. A falafel pita versus a veggie and hummy... Uh, hummy? <laughs> Why is word wrong so much funnier if you add a Y at the end? That's like, <laughs> that's the worst way to say the word wrong. This one is, is possibly the easiest bracket we've ever had. This is like uh, what you order as a vegetarian. And this is what somebody serves you as a vegetarian when they don't know what vegetarians eat. Like, th this is a disaster. I like all the individual elements, but like, it, it just as a whole, I don't feel like it works at all. Falafel pita, on the other hand, it's just delicious. So we're going with that one. What the heck is a bocadillo? Okay. Um, uh, I, so I, this is my least favorite sandwich in the world. I, I do not like egg salad at all. It's also the most offen offensive sandwich that you can eat because it smells like garbage. And if you're in like a closed environment and you open this, you're kind of a butthole, okay? What the heck is a bocadillo, though? Is jamon and bread rubbed with cut tomatoes? What does that even mean? Is that like Kobe bread? It's like they were... <laughs> The, the bread was in the same room as, as hothouse tomatoes? I don't understand. It doesn't matter because it's going to beat the egg salad sandwich. I'm serious. Like the, I don't know if I had like a traumatic experience 
with uh, with egg salad as a kid or something. But like, even sometimes when when Kate will like, she'll be like, "Hey, at the grocery store, can you pick me up an egg salad sandwich?" And in like the pre the prepared deli section, there will be like those hard plastic clamshell sandwiches. Uh, Sometimes she'd eat half and then leave the other half in the fridge, and I don't even like looking at it. It's just something about it. I just don't like... I don't like knowing it's in proximity to me. I don't know what to say. It's not rational, but I'm like, really? Like, I, I could go get you, like, real food. I don't have to get you, like, a an egg salad sandwich on, like, Dempster's whole wheat bread from IGA. But I just... I just do not like it. I hate it, man. It's it's dead to me. Cucumber tea sandwich versus Kentucky hot brown. None of these sandwiches have been made since the year 1983. This is... Okay, so let's diagnose, okay? The cucumber tea sandwich is... Um, I mean, it's possibly the most British food I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, it is cucumbers in between two layers of unsalted butter on white bread with the crust cut off. Just saying the sentence made me very angry. This thing, am I insane? Is this thing designed to look like the Confederate flag? Or am I just reading into things that, that don't appear to actually be existing? It is? <laughs> I, I also, I don't even really know what I'm looking at. Um, so it's, a, it's an open-faced sandwich. There's some turkey. There's some bacon, obviously. There's some tomato. And then there is Mornay sauce. I don't know what that is. I will tell you, whatever's going on here, they're not making it one more round. This will be the final round, uh, victory for either of these sandwiches. Um... But I, I think, like, if push came to shove, if you gave me one of these to eat, I mean, I gotta go with the Kentucky Hot Brown. But, like, it's... <laughs> I genuinely imagined the taste of both of these. I, this is... This is just sad, man. A banh mi versus a falafel pita. It's very tight, but for me, I'm, I'm a falafel pita guy. If you said, hey, would you, like, would you rather get pita or would you rather get banh mi? I would rather get the pita. Secondarily, if I'm in a Vietnamese restaurant, I think I would rather get pho than a banh mi most of the time. Whereas if I'm at a falafel pita restaurant, I would, that's the top choice on the menu. So just in terms of relative strength, I have to go there. Um, so we'll go falafel pita. I, I can't believe we're in a, a half, like in the quarterfinals here. We have two sandwiches I've never seen in my life. Um, we'll, we'll take the bocadillo out of this. And, and then I think you know what's coming. Oh, okay. We're moving on to the, to the uh, Southeast. Southeast Conference. <laughs> we have a cheesesteak and a patty melt. It's another tough question. I'm going to be honest with you, I think I'm a cheesesteak guy. I've only had a couple in my life. I've had a couple patty melts as well. I'm, this might be controversial. I kind of prefer just the grilled cheese or a hamburger to a patty melt. Like, I feel like a patty melt is, is worse than the two foods that, it, that were its parents, if that makes sense. It's not like, it's still good, but I think the cheesesteak, it has more of an identity to me as well. The patty melt's fine, but like, you know, if I wanted a patty melt, I could be like, oh, I'll just get like a grilled cheese. It would satisfy the craving. If you wanted a cheesesteak, you, you know, you're stuck. You got to get the cheesesteak. Chicken salad sandwich versus a jambon beurre. Uh, it's not even close. Chicken salad may actually be more offensive to me than egg salad, but it gets less hate from me because it's less popular. Um, any sandwich served on a baguette is, is high tier in my world. I don't mind a buttered meat sandwich in, in extreme moderation. I'm going jambon. Pardon me, jambon beurre. A gyro versus a grilled cheese. Man, that's tough. That is a tough one. 
You catch me on a couple of di- uh, this, dude. I gotta think about this. This is this is mighty spicy. This grilled cheese loses to this hero, but you can do a lot better than this. I can get down with the occasional craft single grilled cheese. Don't get me wrong, but like a real grilled cheese, good bread. Good cheese, maybe, oh, dude, I mean, I get that this is like a melt now, but a little bit of bacon inside of it. A gyro, the, the problem that I have with the gyro is that we're coming off Falafel Pita winning its, its quarter, uh, or winning its, uh, its division. I would rather have a Falafel Pita than a gyro, but this is not Falafel Pita versus gyro, this is gyro versus grilled cheese. I'm going to be straight up with you. It's going to be controversial slightly. I'm a grilled cheese guy here. I'm a grilled cheese guy. The crispiness of the bread, the richness of the cheese, it's a lunchtime classic. I'm going grilled cheese. Croque Madame versus peanut butter and jelly. When did we create a uh, universe? And, and how wrong could we possibly be? that the default PB&J is served on untoasted bread. I ate some PB&Js as a, as a kid, and I liked them. But a PB&J on toasted bread is so much better than a PB&J, especially, like, if it's sitting in your lunchbox for a couple hours. And, like, the other... The, the PB&J, it needs banana, man. If you throw banana into the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, it elevates it to an absurd degree. Hello. I, I did not see the Discord. I can't open it right now because I've got display capture up. Say goodbye to good night sleep. Her bottom two teeth are coming. Oh, out. our baby's teething. Okay. I, like, I saw like little like white things. <clears throat> yeah. And I like, felt it and was like, <laughs> it's the bottom two teeth. Mm. And I was like, no. My, my dream. That's okay. My, my sleep. <clears throat> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, banana. You add banana to, to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, it, it elevates it. If anything, I think that the default should be a peanut butter, banana, and jelly sandwich. And then you should be like, hold the banana if you want the peanut butter and jelly. That's my two cents on that. Um, the croque madame, I just, I, 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 a messy sandwich is annoying for me, quite frankly. And I know it's a individual preference. I really also don't like a, like a fried egg, quite frankly. So I, I gotta go PB and J, but I'm not a, I'm not a, a I'm not convinced either way. Tell me you're from New York without telling me you're from New York. Yo, Ox, can I get a bacon, egg, and cheese, salt and pepper, ketchup, mayo on a roll? Yes, sir. You already know the vibe. Can't forget the Bev. Gotta cop that airy. Yes, sir. I mean, this is like, this sandwich does not exist anymore. What is this? This looks like a work schedule. 10 minutes set up, breakdown. 15 minute break. You know, this is when you're going to do shelf stocking. This is the, the daily stand-up to end the day and get ready for tomorrow. Like, this, this is not a real sandwich. This is not a food. This is a timetable. The bacon, egg, and cheese is a classic. Now, I know I said I don't really like a fried egg. A breakfast sandwich is, like, the one exception for me. He's played too much King of Retail. <laughs> it's true. The bacon, egg, and cheese is the exception. When the, when the egg is interior to the sandwich, I got no problem. When they just put a fried egg on top of the sandwich, or the burger for that matter, it's not my, uh, that's not my scene. Bacon, egg, and cheese wins. Ham and cheese sandwich versus the Thanksgiving sandwich. Um, I, look, again, you're going to make a lot of enemies. Or I'm going to make a lot of enemies. I do not like a Thanksgiving sandwich that much. I know it's got a moist maker inside of it. You could pour gravy over the top. 
I think, let me put it this way. Here's, here's my take on it, okay? If the Thanksgiving sandwich was so good, why don't we eat it more than once a year? I think it's like eggnog. By artificially limiting its availability, we've inflated our value of, of how the sandwich actually tastes. If it was so good, then it would be good in March. It would be good in June. It would be good in September. I don't, I believe that the limited availability and supply of this sandwich has caused, caused an, uh, an outlier in terms of its actual perception. That being said, a ham and cheese sandwich is not particularly inspiring. <laughs> A ham and cheese sandwich is, I mean, I, let me put it this way. I've gone to Subway probably, I wouldn't be surprised if I've been 200 times in my life. It has never even crossed my mind to purchase the ham sandwich at Subway. I've gotten turkey, chicken, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, you know, meatball, BMT club cold cut combo. I would why would you ever get a ham sandwich if you had the choice of getting a cold cut combo or like a pepperoni sandwich or something? Is I, I eat these at home from time to time, but it's a sandwich that really you know what you're getting when you get it. You know, you're getting it just it's yeah, I, I like that. Always good, never great. So I, I, you know what? For novelty's sake, I will go with the the Thanksgiving. Quite frankly, this is just an embarrassment. Falafel pita over the bocadillo. I don't even know what you are. Cheesesteak versus jambon beurre. I mean, this is a ham sandwich, but you put some style points on it. We're going cheesesteak. Grilled cheese PB and J. Easiest decision of my life. You go grilled cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese over the Thanksgiving. Falafel pita versus cheesesteak, I hate to say it, is not a controversial decision. If you give me the choice between the two, I'm going falafel pita. Now, grilled cheese versus a bacon, egg, and cheese. It's a very tough decision. Yes, sir. It's a tough decision because they occupy, you can't concoct too many situations in your life where you have the choice between the two. You know, one exists pretty much exclusively within the breakfast category. Um, one is more of a lunchtime food or even a snack, you could say. Some places do serve all-day breakfast, but even still, it's hard to concoct a, a genuine situation in which these go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So I'm thinking to myself, and I, you know what I'm thinking? Is it, it brunch. Brunch is the intermingling of these two meals. If we're at brunch, 100% of the time, I'm getting the grilled cheese. Full stop. If, if we're in a position where we've been swapping time zones, I'm getting the grilled cheese. It's not even really about the cheese. It's about the fried bread, man. Like the, the, the interior, it's kind of a wash for me right now. The crispiness, the saltiness, and, and like the fat layer of the fried bread is so much more inspiring than like, you know, this thing that clearly came out of like a, a clear plastic bag they got from the grocery store that just said rolls on it. Like, this has got some, some love and attention paid to it. I got to give it to the grilled cheese on this. Falafel pita versus grilled cheese? I mean, come on, we're going falafel pita. <laughs> now, the Cuban O sandwich versus the falafel pita in the finals. Let's go through the tail of the tape, okay? Cuban sandwich. Ham and pork. I think it uses... I don't know what, what what pork is in this context. I think it's like a... It's like pork loin. Like pork tenderloin sliced. Swiss cheese, pickles, and mustard. Delicious. Fantastic. There's a reason it's in the finals. 
falafel pita. Falafel, also known as uh, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, uh, minced and fried. Lettuce, tomato, onion, cucumber, hummus. Let's be honest, so they did falafel a little bit of a disservice with this description. You may also find yourself with some pickled cabbage in there. You may also find yourself um, with uh, some hot sauce, with some garlic sauce, with some tzatziki or something like that. Tahini, exactly. A little bit, they, they did a disservice here, in my opinion, with the ingredients of the falafel. Now I'm going to walk through this a little bit, and I'm not just spinning for time, okay? The falafel pita has one principal problem. It's the pita. I, I, I don't know if I've ever been to a falafel pita establishment and been like, wow, this pita is amazing. The actual quality of the, of the bread doesn't vary, in my opinion. Most of the time, I find that it's, it's merely kind of just there. I find that there's a low amount of variance. Now, the Cubano has a problem as well. It's the quality of the meat inside. Sometimes you're going to get deli meats. Sometimes you're going to get, you know, delicious uh, boar's head parma ham. Sometimes you're going to get the cheapest 99 cent per, per 100 gram, you know, square ham that money can buy. They both have, you know, their strengths. They also both have their weaknesses. Can I tell you another weakness with the falafel pita? It's the falafel. There's a, it, quite the opposite of the pita. There's an insane amount of variance in falafel. You can have unbelievably good falafel. They made themselves, deep fried it, and it's fresh right into the pita. Sometimes There's a place in, near my university. I used to go there. I'm not going to say its name because it's a local business, and I still think it was pretty good. You'd be like, oh, one falafel pita, please. I swear to God, this guy would open a Tupperware with six falafel balls in it and put it in the microwave right in front of you. Come on, man. It's insulting. Still got it every time. But it, it ends up almost being like, it's, it's like a little kind of mushy hummus ball instead of what it should be, which is crispy. And I, I, I know this has a negative connotation sometimes, but almost like grainy. You know, when you bite into a falafel pita, it should be like, um, it's a little bit of like a vegetarian kind of like cotton candy going on or something in there. It's, it's beautiful. Now, it's a tough decision. I'm, I'm still thinking on it myself. There you go. Yeah, like a little chickpea sand. Exactly. I'm still thinking. If I had the choice... That now now I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with this from a philosophical context as well, can I tell you? Because I no longer trust myself. What would I order at a restaurant? 100% of the time I will be ordering the falafel pita. But am I ordering the falafel pita because I actually like it more? Or am I ordering it because I'm a guy who orders falafel if it's on the menu? Which one activates the, the parts of my brain that I want to light up the most? The enjoyment centers, you know? It's a very tough decision. I don't want to take it too lightly. Now I'm thinking like when you bite into a Cuban sandwich and, you know, like the ingredients aren't aligned properly and the moisture layer is a little too thick and when you bite into it, it gets all askew. Like the top layer slides too much and you got to do your own re-affixing. You don't have to deal with that in a pita. But with a pita, sometimes you bite into a load-bearing seam and the whole thing just comes out. It's not possible, man. I just dropped my phone out of my pocket. It's not possible, okay? It's insanity. I don't... It, would, a cube, would a Cuban sandwich beat a grilled cheese? 100%. Would a falafel pita beat an Italian sandwich? 100%. 100%. Yo, Chubbigans, thanks for the gifted subs. The, the, the maestro of meals, cook, serve, delicious developer. 
may have their own uh, opinion on this subject. I think at the end of the day, the best way to look at this would be not the average sandwich, because this is not your average sandwich venue. I think it's if they were made to the best of, of the, uh, the, the purity and the intention was there to make the best sandwich possible, then in that case, though it pains me to have to choose, it would be the Cuban sandwich. There's, there's my bracket. <laughs> At the end of the day, I would say that a Cuban sandwich, it varies, but it can hit higher highs for me. The falafel sandwich or falafel pita, I would say always great, but maybe I've, I've never truly tasted one that was sublime. I think the Cuban sandwich has a higher ceiling. That's my take on this subject. We don't need to go through this, mostly because the screen region doesn't seem to work very well. The most important thing is that the egg salad sandwich didn't get a single victory. The cucumber sandwich didn't get a single victory. And uh, the, the cucumber sandwich was relegated. If I could do the, the, the list of, like, worst sandwiches, I'm thinking it, it would come down to chicken salad versus cucumber. That's a, that's a bracket for another day. 